Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jin Tao Zhang. I'm a software engineer in machine learning from Square. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a super workflow concept on gra uh, graph neural networks with Kubernetes and Fook. Here, Fook is a new open source framework, and I will give more detailed introduction later. So first, I'm going to give an introduction to the business context of graph neural networks, more specifically, graph load embedding. We use one of the most representative graph embedding algorithms, load to wake, as an example to illustrate the problem in more details. Then we split the load to wake algorithm into multiple steps and focus on the word to work embedding step, which is the bottleneck of the graph embedding computing. Then we introduce the FUG framework briefly and introduce the concept of super workflow to reformat the computing workflow of load to work. Finally, we present some benchmark testing results on load to work with different word to work methods and conclude the, this work with a summary. So let's provide some background and introduction. So what are logic graphs? So logic graphs are logic bases forming into graphs. There's some very good example out there, uh, like Google logic graph. Is there a web page graph for their search engine? Social graph in Facebook friends, Merchant graph in e-commerce, for example, transaction graphs, buyer-seller relation graphs. So graph learning is a complement to traditional machine learning and it focuses on graph topology to find critical business insights. On logic graphs, there have been a lot of research conduct using graph neural networks to solve critical business problems, especially in e-commerce and fintech. Some examples are like fraud detection are very critical for e-commerce and fintech. The reason graph neural networks can help is that fraudsters tend to form a cluster in their activity graph. Another example is the cross-selling and the recommendation. Basically that with load embedding, you can easily get item similarity and a cluster, uh, customer similarity from the graph embedding. So there have been various graph neural networks published in the past few years. For example, load work is a transductive model embedding load embedding algorithm on relatively static graphs. And the graph siege is an inductive algorithm on dynamic graphs. We will focus on load to work for its high popularity. So load embedding is a common type of graph embedding and is to map each graph node to a low dimensional space. So in this context, those with similar local neighborhood will have similar embeddings and only graph topology matters in the embedding process as shown in this diagram below. However, graph embedding is very complicated. Think about in image embedding, image size are fixed. In word embedding, text is linear and it has fixed sizes with a sliding window. But in graph embedding, graph node numbering is arbitrary with a very complicated structure. So the process of load to work includes a few steps. Like first, you have to uh, create a simple graph and index every node. Then you have to conduct random walks of a given length starting from each vertex. Then you have to conduct embedding using word to work 
by treating the running walk pass as taxes. As it's clear that the computing workload is huge on large graphs, and word to work is a critical component of load to work. The original load to work paper provides long distributed Python code, which can only handle very small graphs. Here we introduced our distributed load to work algorithm in Spark. The entire graph will be stored in memory, and we use a JSON list to represent this graph in a distributed way. And we implement a distributed brave first search algorithm for random walking. To this end, our distributed load to work implementation can work on large graphs with hundreds of millions of nodes very efficiently. To create a graph in memory, we just need to distribute graph storage to many computing instances for random access of nodes and edges. The challenging part is that a deep traversal on large graphs can quickly drain the stack. Another important thing is indexing. Indexing is to convert load labels to a set of sequential integers. The goal are threefold. Fold. You can significantly reduce uh, memory and storage usage. You can also provide a better load balancing and data partitioning. Also, indexing is also required at the embedding step. Random walk is a critical step for load to work to generate a connection of node path, which will be served as text for work to work embedding. During the process of random walks, walking, there are a set of strategies to determine how to hop from one vertex to another in the graph. This is strategies controls how the generated task represented the original graph. From this perspective, you can view load to work as an extended word to work algorithm on graphs. So as we have observed that word to work embedding setup step is the bottleneck of load to work. We start to explore word to work embedding in PyTorch. There are some existing word to work implementations. For example, Jinsim is a Python package and it has a word to work module, but it can only handle very small graphs, like uh, 10,000 or 50,000 vertices. Spark MLlib has a word to work module but it's not fully functioning. For example, it doesn't support a, it doesn't support a negative sampling. It has a, some hard limit on the number of uh, nodes of a graph it can handle. And the run, running time performance is not very impressive. It, it will require some large improvement on, on some large graph. A PyTorch implementation can overcome all the problems found in ML, uh, Spark MLlib. And it only requires a small CPU cluster or a large CPU instance. So this diagram shows the PyTorch load to work process. It requires a work to work pre-processing step to quickly generate all the relative information and data before moving to the PyTorch embedding training step. So the word to work pre-processing step uh, contains a set of tasks. For example, uh, count and normalize word frequencies, remove real words, index words, and conduct negative sampling. All these tasks are highly parallelable and it can be accelerated by disputed computing. 
So the embedding training step is an iterative process with a maximum number of iterations. It contains multiple for loops inside. A GPU is critical for runtime performance in this step. And distributed computing, a lot of, of much help because it's iterative. Have to the next step is rely on, uh, rely on the previous step's results. So finally, we can create a super workflow by running each step in the different computing frameworks with different degrees of parallelism. Each step also has very different time complexity. For example, the random walk step will require substantially more computing resource on large graphs. Here, super workflow is a workflow whose back Back, uh, back end computing can be in very different frameworks. Like for example, Python, Spark, PyTorch, Dask. Also, these four steps can be managed by a single service instead of four different services. So it's very important to use a customized parallelism and resource at different steps. This diagram summarizes the super workflow of load to work. So the graph creation and index step require a median sized spot cluster with maybe a couple of hundred cores. The random walk step will require a substantially bigger cluster with over a thousand of cores. And the word to work pre-processing will require a median to small size cluster with like a one or 200 cores maybe. The final step, PyTorch embedding and training, will require a large GPU computing instance instead of a cluster. So here we continue to explore how to create a super workflow for load to work. To create a workflow, super workflow for uh, load to work, a convenient tool is um, Fug which has been open source in the GitHub under the name of the Fug project. Fug is a pure abstraction layer and can unify and simplify core concepts of distributed computing. If you have a Python pipeline with very limited code changes, you can run, you can use the Fug to run it in multiple computing frameworks. For example, Python, Spark, Task. Fug can also help request a computing resource from Kubernetes uh, for this computing frameworks. Here is a, a print screen of the Fug project. You can uh, give it a try by searching the Fug project in Google. So here is the architecture of Fug uh, framework. At the top of different computing platforms, frameworks, we first build an abstraction layer called an execution engine. It could be a Pandas or a Spark or Dask or Python. Then it's an abstraction of basic operations on top of this engine. It will include some map, partition, join, and a SQL select statement, some example. Then on top of the execution engine, we use direct a static graph to, to describe the workflow. It's very similar as Airflow, it's stack to manage the workflow. And we add a program interface and build in modules extension to the system. For example, save, load, print, data frames. On the very top level, we provide a new way to express your workflow like uh, Fug SQL. So also we also have a machine learning and streaming feature in Fug. So Fug also manages your execution DAG. They can automatically parallelize independent branches in your uh, workflow and also automatically uh, persist your intermediate results. In addition, Fug workflow is fully testable 
So more errors can be captured during the testing phase. So you can fail faster if you have bug in your Spark pipeline. You are also able to resume an execution with checkpoint points after a pause or failure. So this diagram demonstrates the architectures of the load to wake super workflow. At the very top, we use this, we have a scheduler like Airflow to control the sequence of each step. We have four steps here. At each step, we use Fug to connect task information and degrees of parallelism and submit a, a resource allocation request to Kubernetes along with a proper Docker images. For example, we want a Spark cluster with a thousand cores and three terabytes of memory to run a job. At the very bottom, all the Kubernetes containers will be taken from the primary cloud providers, for example, uh, AWS or Google Cloud, uh, through their managed Kubernetes engine like EKS or GKE. This whole system is very neat and simple, but it's very powerful on distributed computing for complex graph neural networks. So we also have some hyperparameter for NoteVec to tune. So there is quite a lot of like uh, the number of random walks for each uh, uh, vertex, length of random walk, the, some probability of return the original nodes or get, get to a new nodes when you do a hopping from one node to another one, the probability could control uh, the search behaviors, like a, more like a brief first search or deep first search. Uh, we also have a few uh, hyperparameters from load to work step, like the sliding window size, and the minimum word count threshold, the number of iterations. Optimize all this hyperparameter to require huge computing workload. So fortunately, that hyperparameter tuning is uh, parallelable, even in uh, iterative tasks. So now we're going to show some testing results on load to work with different workflows and word to work method. Here we first we introduce the computing environment for conducting tests testing. This is a traditional setup of an interactive development environment with Jupyter Notebook. So the Spark is used, usually a standby Spark cluster is required. In our case, we add a FOOC as an abstract computing layer and the only entry point to interact with any of the computing frameworks. So our cluster is built on top of Kubernetes and each user can start and stop their own cluster in their own notebook section, session. The latency to start a new Spark cluster is on seconds level. The same thing is purely on demand and ephemeral. So we don't use any standby centralized cluster. So if we, in addition that with AWS uh, Elastic File System mounted to each part, EFS, the update of code and dependencies will be available in a new Spark cluster immediately. So this is a lot of the one of this kind of interactive uh, environment. Uh, uh, to the FUG and the Kubernetes. So we use this system to conduct a lot of benchmark testing. This, uh, this set of curves uh, demonstrate the testing results. Uh, we use the FUG to do benchmark testing and then coordinate node to work computation in various computing frameworks. So here we have Python, we have Dask, we have Spark local and Spark cluster. So the x-axis is the number of uh, vertex in the graph, come from 100 to a million. Uh, the y-axis is the runtime in seconds. We generate this graph, use some random graph generator uh, with uh, like a 5% of probability for every two, every two vertex to have an edge. 
So it's like a running graph. So this blue curve is the runtime performance of low to weight code from the original author. And the author curve of the performance of the same, same full code running in different uh, execution engine. We have four, uh, three options, task, spark, local, spark, uh, cluster. For the graph with one million uh, vertices, the full version of, on Spark is significantly faster. So this diagram explains why Fuga can be called a super framework, as it can invoke a set of computing frameworks with very little code change. We also conduct uh, testing on very large graphs with the unified Spark pipeline and they conduct work to work using the Spark ML lib. For a graph with uh, 10 million vertices and 300 million edges, the load to work process takes about three hours with 500 cores and three terabytes of memory. For even larger graph with 100 million uh, vertices and three billion edges, it takes about eight hours with 2,000 cores and 12, 12 terabytes of memory. So in each experiment, the work to work embedding step takes about 45 to 50% of the run, total runtime, but use only 5% of all the computing resource. So with the same graph, we conducted some benchmark testing by running the super workflow using Spark and PyTorch on Kubernetes. For the graph with 10 million edges, uh, 10 million vertices, the work to work embedding step takes only about 30 minutes with the instance with the 32 CPUs and the four GPUs. This represents about 66% of runtime reduction from 1.5 hours to 0.5 hour. For the graph with the 100 million vertices, the word to work embedding step takes about one hour on a larger instance with a 96 CPU and a 16 GPUs. This require this represents like a seventy percent runtime reduction from three point four hours to one hour. So, with the same two graphs, the cost saving of using super workflow is even more significant. For the graph with ten million vertices, the vertical work embedding step cost is reduced from seven hundred fifty uh, uh, CPU hours to twenty CPU hours plus two CPU or uh, GPU hours. This represents like a more than 90% cost reduction after including the cost of the word to work pre precedent step. Similarly, on the graph with 100 million vertices, the cost saving is from 6,800 CPU hours to 100 CPU hours and 16 GPU hours, also more than 90% cost reduction. So this runtime and cost saving will be substantially amplified if you consider the huge cost on hyperparameter tuning. So in summary, so we introduced the concept of super workflow using the framework, uh, Fug framework uh, on Kubernetes. Fug and Kubernetes are the two critical dependency on developing such efficient super workflows on complex graph neural networks. We use load to work as a case study to show how to create a super workflow step by step and demonstrate its advantages on runtime and cost re reduction. Finally, it's straightforward that the idea of super workflow can be generalized to other complex deep learning problems. So the Fug based load to work has been open sourced in GitHub under the Fug project and can be PIP installed. Uh, the package also contains a few end-to-end -end examples for you to quickly wrap up. Um, that's all for my talk. Thank you. Uh, finally, your feedback is important to us. Don't forget to read and review the session. Thank you.